Okay, in Module 7, we'll be revisiting topics such as pressure and wind that we introduced in Module 6, but we'll be kicking it up a notch. That is, up into the atmosphere. We'll be considering pressure patterns in the middle and upper troposphere and how these affect pressure patterns at the Earth's surface. Now please note that up to this point, each module has corresponded with a single chapter in your book. However, in Module 7, we'll be borrowing topics from several chapters in order to help you fully connect what is happening at mid and upper levels of the atmosphere with the sensible weather on the ground. So pay attention to the, uh, to the reading assignment because it does jump around just a little bit. The surface highs and lows that you studied in Module 6 are born, evolve, and diminish due to what's happening at upper, upper levels of the atmosphere. The first topic we will tackle in Module 7 will be constant pressure surfaces. Very, very important topic. Very important you understand it. We've already talked in Module 6 about the fact that if we used station pressure to make surface maps, locations in the Rockies would always have low pressure, lower pressure than lower elevations, not because of any active weather systems, but simply due to their higher altitudes. The Rockies would always be low pressure, and it wouldn't really show us anything about the active weather. So that wouldn't make for a very useful weather map. This points out the importance of sea level pressure in creating a level playing field for surface maps. In a similar way, when considering pressure patterns aloft in the atmosphere, it is much more useful to choose standard pressure levels, such as 850 millibars, 700 millibars, 500 millibars, rather than standard altitudes like 10,000 feet, 20,000 feet. In order to understand how such maps are created and how to interpret these mid and upper level weather maps, you must understand the concept that pressure decreases more rapidly with increasing altitude in cold air columns and more slowly with altitude in warm air columns. Not sure you can visualize this? Well, make use of the virtual balloon ride animation to get the hang of it. You've also learned in Module 6 that air spiral spirals inward. It converges toward a surface low and spirals outward. It diverges away from a surface high. Now, if this were all that were happening, air would either pile up at the center of the low or completely disappear from the center of the high. And nature wouldn't stand for either of these situations. There must be some other convergence and divergence going on. In studying about mid and upper level pressure patterns, you'll also learn about the terms ridge and trough, as well as the important concept of vorticity. Essentially, it's spin in the atmosphere. Speaking of upper levels of the atmosphere, you'll also learn about the jet stream, as well as pockets of fast-moving air called jet streaks embedded within the jet stream. It turns out that the position of upper level ridges and troughs, as well as jet streaks, are crucial to the development or demise of surface storms. These surface storms are often referred to as mid-latitude cyclones. You'll also learn the conveyor belt structure of these mid-latitude cyclones here in Module 7.